I am just one person among a number of folks. Um, and Susan is here, and I, I really I'm thrilled that she'll be coming up to talk with me after this and, and talk about housing. Uh, Peyton Narancic, architect of the Sierra Institute, wave your hand. And Tracy Ferguson, planner, Plumas County. And Kevin Goss, supervisor. And of course, KD will talk more about too. All of these things, and Nancy Presser, all of these folks are part of this recovery. This is just one component. And I have a few slides in here too to share with you how I also present it. So it, this is a little bit different because I wanted you to see, sometimes I don't show the actual burn slides, uh, but sometimes I do. It depends who I'm talking to. Um, and I thought it would be useful to share some of that with you. And yes, I do know what day it is. Uh, we were still deciding what day I was going to speak, I think, when this was sent in. And uh, I direct the Sierra Institute for Community and Environment. And this is our, our backyard, if you will, a really beautiful area in the northern Sierra. It's not what people think about when you talk about the Sierra. They think of Lake Tahoe. They think of the high peaks, Yosemite, the east side. Or when we bring in new employees, we also say it's not the high peaks, it's not all those areas, and it's not the ocean. But it is a very rural area with all the beauty and all the challenges that come with that. Uh, the Sierra Institute's been working, we've been around for 30 years, believe it or not, and our focus has been on national policy issues, state policy issues, collaboration, and giving rural communities a voice. Yeah, you've seen this. Jennifer mentioned some of these details. I'm not going to recount them for you all. You know these details, downtown Greenville. Uh, there's the downtown Greenville before the fire. And as you look at this, you can see the uh, rightmost portion of this image is actually the school and the high school. And directly below that, uh, the supermarket, they're still there. You can see them. But there's the aftermath of Greenville after the fire went through. Hard to look at. I can look at these things now, but for a long time, absolutely didn't. But I share some of these so folks have just a flavor. And, and in some ways, I should apologize to all of you because I do fully understand the sort of gut-wrenching effect of looking at images like this because of the impact that they have. And, but what I also do in talking with folks there are too many people who talk about, well, you know, there's a lot of good fire out there. We need good fire. Well, we don't need repeated fires. We don't need devastating, catastrophic wildfire, not at the scale that we're getting them now, not with the conditions that we're seeing burning taking place. So I show this also. This is Fred's Creek. We had the Moonlight Fire 14 years before the Dixie Fire. And you can see starting to, to get recovery back there. The right slide is after the Dixie Fire reburned. And scientists looking at this Moonlight Fire area identified that we went from a 60% high severity burn in the Moonlight Fire. We now have a shrub complex that is replaced in 30% of that 60% high severity burn area. It's now a shrub complex. We are losing forests. So it matters what we do and how we treat the forest. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Um, and some people say, well, you know, if we get fire and at least the big trees will be okay. Not with catastrophic wildfire in too many instances. Yes, sometimes they do survive, but many times they absolutely don't. So in addition to the various collaboratives, we also launched a program called Indian Valley Strong. We raised money, and you heard what I said the Sierra Institute does, and we work locally, regionally, nationally. We were, we've been doing a lot more local work we were doing food cards, money for food, money for gas, money for hotels, vouchers, and that sort of thing. We raised several hundred thousands of do dollars to do this work. Folks supported us as a nonprofit organization because we had some history in doing projects for quite some time, including this one. This is the Indian Valley Wood Utilization Campus, and it was very fortuitous that we said we need wood utilization back in this area. And in Plumas County, uh, we're part of the wood basket, have long been part of the wood basket in California, producing a lot of forest products. Uh, Mill and Chester, Mill and Quincy, they still operate. 
this area has provided a lot of wood. This is the old Louisiana Pacific mill site. Um, Louisiana Pacific left a site behind with some uh, higher levels of arsenic, so we had to remediate. And fortunately, US EPA has been very generous in their brownfields program. We're now on grant number four plus. Uh, we've had some assessment grants, but cleanup grants that allow us to remediate that site. And you see here heavy equipment, uh, cleaning up that site so we can actually purposely, purposefully reuse it around wood utilization. More on that in a moment. So here's some of the first things that we've done in terms of wood utilization. Uh, uppermost slide on the left was 2018. We were wrapping up a building, the very first full cross laminated timber building in the state of California. And that's, I'm not gonna explain it to you, I'll say talk to Susan or Peyton, many of you know what that material is. It just cross laid lumber, but it's an incredibly dense product. More on that in a moment. And we were also demonstrating it in the cross laminated timber shed. That's to store chips. Those chips are for that building because in that lower left picture, upper left, lower left in that upper left quadrant, that's a boiler that we put in. It heats the Health and Human Services building. One boiler, 55,000 square foot building, and it has the emissions of about four wood stoves. So it's saying we can use wood products as opposed to just burning piles in the wood, woods with the smoke that's associated with that. And then a firewood operation as well. When Dixie Fire came, the Sierra Nevada Conservancy was very generous in allowing us to repurpose a grant and build a mill instead. Within three months of the uh, of Dixie Fire going out, we had the first board produced. Within six months, we had an operating mill. And that mill served multiple purposes. The first and probably most important purpose was it gave people hope that we could actually rebuild. They drive in, the folks at the mill would say, folk, they drive in and they would either be laughing or crying, but they were celebrating the success of that mill. Uh, what you see in these other images, you see the stack of lumber, you see burned logs in the background, and you see the operating mill, and at the ribbon cutting in the lower right hand quadrant here, you see Wade Crowfoot came out for that ribbon cutting, the Secretary of Resources, State of California, and 170 people turned out to celebrate that opening. It matters. Cross laminated timber, without getting into too much detail, we are now using this product because of its fire resistance capabilities over standard stick frame construction. And the question comes, are you close in terms of cost? And the answer is yes. Cross laminated timber, if there's a fire on the outside, there's an eighth inch thick piece of metal, and then it has to get through on the sides, five inches of insulation, non-combustible insulation, nine inches on the roof, and then another four inches plus of the panels themselves, which stand up to two and three hour burn tests. So this, this is a version, one version of a fire resistant home that we are rebuilding. And thank you to Susan and her team at Atelier Jones and the designs. Uh, this is the one bedroom. We built a one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom. We had Atelier Jones work on the designs. Anyone can walk into the planning department and say, I want the two bedroom. And they are available for folks to use for free. Uh, there's the finished one bedroom. Here's a two bedroom. It's KD's home. And here's the two with the three bedroom home behind it on KD's property. So we had folks who wanted to get back into homes in Greenville, and there they are. And they really are attractive. Greenville, despite the Dixie Fire, has a lot to offer as a place to live. Those arrows represent where are the two arrows on the bottom part of the two homes. That one arrow pointing off on the right-hand side is going to the one-bedroom home that we're building. Again, we're showing folks that this can be done. These homes are, whether it's tomorrow or the next day or next week, these homes are officially complete. And KD will be mov moving in soon, which is not bad for two years out from the fire. And that orange arrow to the top, the Roundhouse Council Indian Education and Cultural Center. 
Again, marvelous design by the Atelier Jones group because Native Americans preceded us in this community. They're absolutely essential, an essential part of this community and they lost so much. They have lost so much over the years. They lost language tapes. They lost irreplaceable artifacts. And in our conversation with the Maidu Roundhouse, someone said, can you build a roundhouse? And Susan and team went to work, and here is the result of that effort. And they're super excited about it. We're super excited about it. It will be a community anchor point, and it allows them, we said, this is absolutely essential for us as part of our rebuilding efforts and to honor and support the Maidu community. Just need to point out, there's a number of folks that make this stuff happen. It's not one person. There is a lot of people and groups that are critical to the success. So where are we going with this? As an organization, as I mentioned, that works locally, regionally, nationally, um, we're starting what's called Mosaic Timber. We have a design for making mass timber structure, ma mass timber panels uh, and building a facility at community scale, not a mega facility, not a hundred, 200, 500 million dollar facility, but something a little over $10 million that we can provide jobs in the community. And as you all know, when you experience something like the Dixie Fire, you have to put people back to work, you got to get people back in homes, and you've got to put people back to work, but create the businesses that can offer those jobs. And you don't do one thing, you've got to do it all together. So this is one way of actually developing a business that will help rebuild homes, put people back to work, and create real opportunity. We're doing this as part of, remember I said, a wood utilization campus? This vision has evolved. We started thinking about what are some of the businesses that we want to launch in this particular 28-acre campus site that's now close to being fully remediated. We start with forest restoration activities you see on the right-hand side there. And there's all these things. You, I, you saw the logs, and from the logs going into the sawmill, making lumber, and then a mass timber, cross-laminated timber production facility. Now we're talking about higher value products from lower value restoration material. Same thing with chips. And you pose the question, how do we do climate smart kinds of things? We're actually in a phase one grant with the state of California where we're trying to make hydrogen out of wood chips. Now we're displacing fossil fuels and we're creating a local fuel from hydrogen. It's no simple task, stay tuned. Another couple of years, hopefully we'll be able to come back with a success story about that really substantial facility, substantial operation, but we do believe it can be done, and this is going to liquid transportation fuels. And Jennifer mentioned the, uh, the diesel generators that were there, and 3,500 gallons of diesel fuel a day. Mike, where were you two years ago after the Dixie Fire? We needed you all coming in with your panels and everything else because it is only very recently that we're losing those diesel generators using that much diesel fuel. Um, we can and you are doing better, thank you. So where's this going? Okay, last part of this. So the idea of the wood utilization campus was really to try to bring back some economic development in an area that needed it and out of the recognition that we can't just do forest restoration. We need to think a little bit bigger. This is the circular economy, Jennifer mentioned it. We have workforce development programs now at the Sierra Institute. We have NEPA teams that are going out and doing work on federal lands to try to do the NEPA work so we can get in and do the forest restoration work. And that leads to project implementation. And then we have these products, right? What do we do with those? This is the circular economy idea. We need to then put that into wood utilization. So what I tell folks at the state is that it's one thing to invest now, billions of dollar in dollars in forest restoration, but we can't only do that because we will not succeed at forest restoration if that's all we do. We have to create this cycle, the restoration economy or the circular economy, because we need those products to basically go back and reinvest in 
back to forest restoration. And we're experiencing it now. So two years ago, when the state had a $59 billion surplus, we had a lot of money going into restoration, a lot of money going into climate change. Now we have, I don't know the last number, 35 or $40 billion deficit. Money is coming out that was put into programs. This is to try to extricate ourselves from the cycle of the ebb and flow of dollars in the federal budget, but to create opportunities, a circular economy to rebuild rural communities to also restore the forest. In summary, this is gonna surprise absolutely no one. We need to advance forest restoration, right? We need to deal with the implications of catastrophic wildfire, the threat of climate change. We need to invest in wood utilization. And I was very pleased to hear not that long ago, somebody from the state, when I got on the, uh, a call with them, I said, I'm gonna just give you my pitch right away. We've got to invest in wood utilization. He said, I think we've got that now, maybe. And then we need to build a circular economy. And with that, thank you for inviting me. And it's great to be with you all and hearing some of what you all are dealing with and how we collectively are addressing and trying to get to a circular economy, a healthier forest, safer landscape, and less smoke all over the state.